Right, so again, Diane Abbott, Britain's longest serving black MP, first female black MP ever elected to Parliament, is once again being used as a political football for racists, and the Tory party is deservedly getting roasted for that. The comments coming from their biggest ever donor, Frank Hester, clearly racist, prompting calls for the Tories to return the donations they've received from him and address the government contracts he has been the recipient of. Private donations from wealthy individuals to political parties aren't for nothing after all. But for all the deserved condemnation that the Tories are getting over this, though, the one place there's no moral high ground to do so, however, is from the Labour Party itself, Diane Abbott's own party. Though, of course, she remains suspended for the heinous crime of having sent the wrong copy of a letter she wrote to a newspaper in reply to one of its stories. The draft sent blatantly used to take down one of Keir Starmer's most publicly vocal critics, as Abbott has been. But of course, that's only part of the story, because Diane Abbott is the most abused MP in Parliament. A single woman of 70 years of age, regularly being verbally attacked, abused and insulted, and made a target of, and so much is being made right now, about MPs' security and safety. Doesn't count for the likes of Diane Abbott, does it? And when so much of that abuse has come from her own party, some of the hypocrisy on show as they attack the Tories now over Abbott is just stupefying. And as two-faced as you get. Meanwhile, the one place you should expect to get support from as a Labour member is from Starmer himself, her party leader. But of course, as ever, he's nowhere to be seen. Right, so the Tories are in trouble across all the newspapers and TV news today over remarks made by their biggest donor, a chap called Frank Hester, towards Diane Abbott. By now, if you've seen the news, you'll know Hester has donated £10 million to the Tories over the past year. He's secured tens of millions of pounds of government contracts. He literally made his fortune in government contracts. His fortune is built on public money, in effect, on profits from such contracts. Because, frankly, why else do most of us think they don't donate money these days, not least to the party in government? He said of Diane Abbott at a time of heightened concern for MP security, though if you've seen my coverage concerning the recent SNP motion for a ceasefire, you'll know I heavily suspect that to have been weaponized for the sake of saving Israel's and Keir Starmer's blushes. But really, that isn't the point. Because it is being talked about now and when Hester's words were that looking at Diane Abbott makes you want to hate all black women and that she should be shot, it is clearly not conducive to her safety and is clearly and very blatantly racist. Now he's been rowing back hard on this. His fortune relies on government contracts after all. The danger of being cut off for him as a result of his comments, well, it'd be bad news for him. It would also be bad news for the Tories losing their biggest donor ever overnight though. So damage limitation is all they are really interested in, as this interview showed. The party spokesperson said um, that Mr Hester has made clear that while he was rude, his criticism had nothing to do with the colour of her skin. Uh, is that right? Um, it, he has been absolutely clear that he, although he spoke in an intemperate well, and rude manner... No, I, I know... Read the, what he said. He said, it's like trying not to be racist, but you see Diane Abbott on the television and you just want to hate all black women because she's there. I don't hate all black women, but I think she should be shot. Diane Abbott needs to be shot. I mean, that is based on the colour of her skin. And they're truly awful remarks, aren't they? So um, there's nothing I can say apart from to condemn them and say that he's absolutely right to apologise. So should the Conservative Party spokesperson yesterday have said it's got nothing to do with the colour of her skin? Well, that's clearly what he said. He used the, the wrong language. He was annoyed with Diane Abbott and was making a wide point. But I'm not, I'm not remotely tempted to try and defend it. Uh, he shouldn't have said it. Um, it was half a decade ago in a private meeting, but that doesn't really excuse it, and that's why he's quite right to apologise profoundly, profusely and completely, because those, those words are not defensible, and I'm not here today in any way to seek to defend them. So you know what my follow-up is? Should the Tory party return the money, the, the, the many millions he's, he's given, or well, are you OK to spend money that has come from him? He, he's only apologising because he's been caught out. <laughs> Yeah, and it, it's, it's obviously, as I say, deeply regrettable. But everybody, uh, you know, you, we can't cancel anybody from participation in public life or indeed donating to parties because they said something intemperate and wrong uh, in their past. And uh, it's not my decision, um, but uh, I do welcome um, uh, those who support the Conservative Party to ensure that we have Rishi Sunak, of course, our first 
Hindu prime you minister. Welcome. The most, you welcome. We, we welcome. We welcome. You don't I have welcome. to return if you, Not returning his money is something else. You're saying you welcome his money. No, I said I welcome all those who seek to ensure that our first Hindu prime minister stays prime minister and that we don't have Keir Starmer um, becoming prime minister of this country. That was Graham Stewart there, Tory MP, energy minister, apparently welcoming Hester's money still as long as it keeps Rishi Sunak in, as long as it keeps Keir Starmer out. They can't turn away donations because that is part of the normal democratic process people engage in. Let's not pretend Hester was giving you money on the scale he was because well, he felt it was his democratic duty to support the party for no other reason than he felt it was the best use of his money. For the good of the country, you understand. Let's not pretend he's apologising affects that ideal at all. Millions of pounds of government contracts point to an ulterior motivation for it. And even if he was the most honest man in the world with regards to his donations, where this Tory party is concerned with all the corruption surrounding VIP lanes and the like, all the other incidences you can think of over the last 14 years, the optics are what they are. This is the Tory party exposed for what they really are again. The media have well and truly turned on them these days. The need for them to go and the new establishment choice Starmer to come in is becoming pretty obvious by the direction of their coverage. The fact independent media outlets like me are finding ourselves in more agreement with these mainstream sources where the Tories are concerned just shows how they've shifted. But unlike them, I'm not going to pretend Keir Starmer is in any way better or has any more moral high ground where the abuse of Diane Abbott is concerned. He suspended Diane Abbott for a clumsily worded early draft of a letter that ended up accidentally being sent to a newspaper, levying accusations of being anti-Semitic against her. This is how it was interpreted, how it was used. Keir Starmer couldn't believe his luck. One of his biggest critics within the Labour Party, Parliamentary Party, had slipped up and gave him the chance to suspend her, where she has been ever since. The case roughly a year on now, still not dealt with. No intention of doing so, it seems. This is about getting rid of another lefty from Parliament. And if you take umbrage with my saying clumsily worded here, they weren't my words. They're the words of Martin Ford, the author of the Ford Report, which has exposed all manner of racist conduct within Starmer's Labour Party, which he has failed to get a grip on, has completely ignored in fact, and exposed Starmer as treating anti-Semitism as more important than any other form of racism, from Islamophobia to anti-black racism, the hierarchy of racism as it's become known as. Here is Ford in his own words commenting on the reasons for Diane Abbott's suspension. I think Diane herself has acknowledged that it was at best very clumsily worded. I could see for myself what she was trying to say, um, which was that if you are non-white, that is obvious, you know, visually obvious. And you know, th those of us um, who have that characteristic quite often experience a wholly irrational prejudice. Doesn't she kind of exemplify the pitfalls of ranking racism in this way or creating a hierarchy of racism? I, I, I believe so um, because I think it means that you can become fair game for those that you say aren't experiencing as much prejudice. If this is a standalone complaint where an apology was given within hours, I think, if not minutes, I can see no reason why that couldn't be dealt with pretty promptly, I think given her service to the party um, and, the, and the appalling racism that she's suffered throughout her political career, I think it would be a terrible shame if this dragged on. Ford's opinion is that Starmer is in the wrong, but then Starmer ignored that report that he wrote completely and blocked MPs from speaking with Ford, took months and months before he finally released it, realising requests for him to do so were never going to go away. The media ignored Ford as well. That clip coming from the special episode of Al Jazeera's The Labour Files, which spoke to Ford specifically on Labour racism. The entire series is well worth a watch on Al Jazeera's YouTube channel. They were the only media outlet to approach Ford and speak to him. It exposes in every single episode of that miniseries why Labour under Starmer hasn't got a leg to stand on accusing the Tories of racism, when they are so much as bad, if not worse now themselves. And there's an underlining of that in how all of a sudden supporting Diane is being used to attack the Tories. Wes Streeting is a classic case, a perfect example to point to in this, who stood up in Parliament on Monday after all of this Frank Hester business came out, saying how revulsed his party was at Hester's words and talking of integrity 
And if the Tories had any, they would return all of Hester's money. Now, this is a guy who in 2018 confronted Abbott with abuse, a torrent of abuse, in a parliamentary corridor. Here's an excerpt from the Squawk Box coverage of that. Labour's Shadow Home Secretary Diane Abbott has suffered the most vile abuse, receiving almost half of all abuse received by female MPs in the run-up to the general election. This would be the 2019 general election. She has spoken movingly of the terrible hate messages she receives on a daily basis. On Tuesday, she had just spoken in a parliamentary debate about personal abuse she has received, the seriousness with which Labour treats the issue of anti-Semitism and the measures the party is taking to combat it. Ms Abbott also made a number of points that the Haredi Jewish community had asked her to raise and for which the community praised her later. As Home Secretary Amber Rudd began to respond, Streeting made an intervention to side against his own party and against Abbott's representations on behalf of the Jewish community in her constituency. Mr Streeting wasn't finished. In a parliamentary corridor, Streeting is alleged to have literally shouted in Ms Abbott's face, standing toe to toe with her and screaming, not my party, in front of a number of onlookers. Witnesses describe Streeting's behaviour as so intimidating that he had to be physically steered away from the Labour front venture. But as awful as Streeting's behaviour has been, and his hypocrisy now is, and as much as he wants to be leader of the Labour Party and potentially Prime Minister, God forbid, he's never been shy about talking about his ambitions, Starmer has gone into hiding again. He might have suspended Diane Abbott on a weak and spurious reason, abusing his own executive power once more to do so, and leaving her in limbo on purpose so she can't stand for Labour come the next general election, coming up potentially any time now. But Abbott not even being allowed the, being the only lefty or only person of colour to end up in the same boat in his Labour Party either. But he can't even bring himself to extend some solidarity and support to a Labour member, which Diane still is. And she has called him out on it. She's issued a statement to this programme, to Good Morning Britain, this morning. It's frightening. I live in Hackney. I don't drive. So I find myself at weekends popping on a bus or even walking places more than most MPs. I'm a single woman and that makes me vulnerable anyway. Yep. But to hear someone talking like this is worrying. For all of my career as an MP, I have thought it's important not to live in a bubble, but to mix and mingle with ordinary people. The fact that two MPs have been murdered in recent years makes talk like this all the more alarming. I am currently not a member of the Parliamentary Labour Party, but remain a member of the Labour Party itself. So I am hoping for public support from Keir Starmer. Well, I hope he gives her public support. Well, don't hold your breath, Susanna. But even Ed Ball sat beside her. Certainly Starmer's type, former Labour MP himself, of course says she should be brought back into the Parliamentary Labour Party now. Her reason for suspension was always weak. Yet here she is being targeted again. She's still an MP, still a Labour member, even if she can't take her seat as a Labour MP, because Starmer has stopped her from doing so. And yet Starmer is still silent as usual as she faces more abuse. He has a track record of not offering support. The notable example that always springs to my mind first is that of left-wing Labour MP Ipsana Begum, a domestic violence survivor, suspended from the party on the basis she was alleged to have committed housing benefit fraud. She got hospitalised as the strain of it all became too much for her to bear, but she's come out the other side of it, exonerated completely. But there was never any support from Starmer. His faction were in fact disappointed when she was cleared of any wrongdoing because they were all set to expel her on the spot the minute she left the courtroom. Because it's all about factional control in Labour. Abbott is not Starmer's faction. She is, in fact, a left winger, a legend. She's made history. She has blazed a trail for other black and female MPs to follow and should be celebrated and revered for her achievements. Instead, she gets belittled and ridiculed and hated upon because while MPs worry about their security, for some reason, MPs like Diane Abbott don't count. You don't have to like her. You don't have to agree with her politics, but you should respect her for what she's done for what she's achieved, for who she is, and both Tories and Labour have shown themselves to both be craven and cruel and prepared to weaponise abuse for their own ends. And the fact the mainstream media are omitting Labour's role in all of that right now, Stormer's role, should shame them as well. But then it shows their bias right now. Because this goes back so much further than Frank Hester as well. But at least it has us talking about this issue once again. And the ongoing abuse of Labour MPs at the hands of Stormer's faction at the same time. 
I haven't said as much as sub last September. She's on record as saying Starmer is trying to force her out. His silence again now damns him by her words. And this video recommendation will give you all the details of that story. And I'll hopefully catch you on the next bit. Cheers, folks.